Well, welcome to my talk about my Hack Week project, about creating a leap replacement using as many parts of ALP as possible. So I guess the obvious, a good first question for any project is why are you doing it? And sometimes, because it's fun, is a great answer. In this case, I have certain use cases, particularly I have a desktop that uses a KVM, so I also use it as a KVM server. Rebooting is, it annoy is annoying because then you have to bring up all your virtual machines again. Um, so for me, that means that Tumbleweed, micro OS, isn't really the best solution ever. I also read on the OpenSUSE mailing lists, there are a lot of community people who would still like something like Alp, if, I mean something like Leap. If you look at the Leap usage figures over the last year, it is only growing. And so I think that there is um, certainly community desire, which was enough to motivate me to see what I could try and do. So I guess a good goal is if we are trying to make a system that is like Leap, which parts of Leap do we care about? And in my case, I didn't really want to use transactional updates because I have lots of packages in OpenSeason and I can't be bothered making them work with them and testing it. Um, I also want to be able to upgrade from 15.5. Not using transactions or updates makes that easier. Um, I want my core, what I consider at least the core of the operating system, not to be in con containers. Part of that is I maintain a desktop environment. And I think the task of making leap out of out is far simpler than packaging a desktop into a container. So that's another reason to point my um, self in this direction. Um, I also, given the other community um, people who are interested in this, I want to make a project that's useful for me because that motivates me to work on it. But at the same time, if it's easy for other people to build, to use and build on, that's where we can get a bigger product. And if enough people do that, you get something that can be considered a leap replacement. If enough people don't, we have a cool new product that meets at least some people's needs. Um, X11 is still important to me because I use keyboard mouse sharing software that only works on X11. The desktops I prefer aren't quite there with Wayland yet, so that was important to me. I have an embedded background before I was in SUSE, so being able to do like Raspberry Pi images, tap into that hobbyist embedded env environment was also important for me. As I already said, migration from Leap 15 systems is part of the whole not changing what you know and you're good at. I have been packaging RPMs for 12 years makes sense to keep trying to do that because it makes my life easy. Um, and so, but on that, if someone doesn't submit Apache and SUSE has a great ALP Apache workload or a great ALP Samba workload, maybe it makes more sense to use those if no one in the community helps set up, step up to maintain something like Chromium or LibreOffice, which is quite a lot of effort, then maybe we go to flat packs for those. And so maybe we end up with a hybrid system and we adapt our tooling so that the equivalent of Zyper install finds you the best possible thing, whether it's an RPM or a flat pack, and you can update everything with one command. So those were kind of the goals for this Hack Week project. Um, next, I chose a name. It was Grassy Knoll. Um, this got the most comment out of anything on the mailing list, so I'm going to address it now. Um, I was looking for a name. So Alps, you think of mountains, extreme sports, extreme things. This, we weren't trying to be extreme here. We were trying to pick a nice place to have a picnic and have a nice, casual, relaxed thing. And when I was looking in a thesaurus, a, a knoll, which is a small, low hill with a rounded top, grassy knoll seemed to fit that well. And so this is probably the most famous picture <laughs> of a grassy knoll that you have ever seen. It also fits my kind of, at the time I was watching lots of Draw Fortress streams and I could see you making a Draw Fortress under a grassy knoll. Um, in Australia, grassy knoll is also a brewery. The session ale is rather good. So these were the reasons to go with the name for the project. Since doing the project, 
I found out the name has issues in certain countries. So going forward into the future, it's not a name we will use, but it is the name we used and the documentation was written and the wiki pages were there and I couldn't be bothered reworking it afterwards. So that's why we have Grassy Knoll. And then probably the best thing for me about this Hack Week project was it wasn't me, there was a team. So Maurizio is the XFCE maintainer. When I started thinking about this project, I started thinking he would, it would be something he would probably also want to work on because he has similar ideas. And when I talked to him about it, he said yes. Then next we had Valentin, which was awesome. Um, he, joined the pro he joined the project because he wanted to learn, which then gave me a new challenge of finding more tasks. Um, and so the fact that Grassy Knoll supports um, GNOME is all because he joined the project and helped with that. And then Lubosh was using it as a... Um, he wanted to play with what was deinstaller at the time, and so he joined the team to use this as an experiment with new installers and... Yeah. And so from that, the scope. As I said before, X11 is important. Um, Enlightenment is important for me because I'm the maintainer. And half of this was to... And one of the main goals was for me to see how many packages I needed to add to learn and work out whether this is something I could maintain with a bit of my spare time if it was only one or two people. And then Mauricio was obviously interested in XFCE. Um, we thought Yast is a very open SUSE thing, so let's try that as well. Um, and as I said before, we got GNOME because someone stepped up and joined. Similarly, you could say we don't have KDE here, which was because we only had a week. We had to pick our battles. Um, if someone joined and helped, then great. But what we learned with the other desktops, we can presume that if people want to contribute KDE to something like this in the future, it will probably work as well with about the same amount of effort as Leap. Um, and then also for GNOME, we only focused on the desktop. We didn't try and get the complicated apps like LibreOffice and things with a ton of dependencies. And so for the design, I basically wanted to start out doing the same thing we did with Leap. So you take the repository from SUSE, use as much of it as possible, and then you have a second repository in OBS that the community can submit additional repository uh, packages to, which is this first repository here. And then in Leap, we were building images in a second repository. So I copied that design because it seemed easiest at the time. Um, through this talk, because we're being kind of technical at this conference, I'm going to show you the things that I got stuck on and I had to figure out so that if you want to go and make your own custom distro based off one of the other OpenSUSE distros, hopefully there's enough information here to start pointing in the right direction. So as you can see here in the repository setup, we're cloning the SUSE out repository as it was at the time, and then we're adding our own backports repository with our extra packages. Um, in the end, I guess I should say now that the project was a success. We had working GNOME, XFCE, and Enlightenment live CDs um, with some functions of yes running. Um, in order to get that working, it took us 392 packages. And when I checked the other day, about 385 of them are still building and fine. And there's a few other unresolvables. But basically, the process from here was I put Enlightenment in the repo. I put the X11 bits in the repo I knew, and then you just start fixing all the unresolvables until everything builds. And same for the others. So if we look here, X11 and Wayland, just to have those is this list of packages. Most of that is related to hardware enablement. Um, I took these from factory. One of my questions is if SUSE doesn't care, if SUSE goes Wayland only for ALP, then by de facto I become the X11 maintainer for whatever this is, and so I wanted to see how much was there. And there's lots of package names, thanks to the live installer Kiwi files, which gave me the list. Um, one of the problems that I did run into a couple of times is 
a lot of our packaging requires and recommends are uh, built around the presumption that certain things are just always there. So there was a couple of places where we found things would build, but then we were missing runtime dependent dependencies because normally something else pulled that in. Um, oh, we have some packages for audio. I just put I just put all these. You can find the full list on the wiki. I just put these here in case you're looking. GDM was one that surprised me a little bit because as someone who uses GDM on a not GNOME system, the current list of dependencies, including libg4 weather, GNOME themes extra, GNOME settings daemon, maybe we can do some work on our GDM packaging to make the dependency tree a bit smaller for those of us not using GNOME. Um, but once you've gone to the, on the plus side of that, once you've gone to the effort of getting GDM working, you can get GNOME working without a crazy list of packages on top of that. Um, and so then Yast, Yast again needed surprisingly few things that weren't in ALP yet. And so there is a list of those. Um, as I said before, full dependency list is on the wiki. We covered, I don't think we covered everything in there because a couple of us just wanted to see which of our other packages built, and so we threw them in and just checked, but those are the core list of dependencies. And so the second part of this is once you have a repository full of packages, you need images to publish them. Um, to keep life simple, we had a KVM image for testing, and then we copied the live CDs from Tumbleweed. So I should say that, I forgot a slide, but basically my initial thoughts with this project were that Leap is basically the same as Tumbleweed, but with a different release cadence. And so ALP is built on Tumbleweed, and so therefore if you were to build ALP the way we build Leap, you should end up with a working system still. And I was quite surprised that that logic in my head actually just worked, because normally things sound that simple and they're not. And so here, coming into the images, Something that took me a while to figure out is you need that in your project config in order to, add, in order to build images rather than RPMs. Um, in the end, we just copied the whole Tumbleweed project config because working out what wasn't, wasn't needed is a task for another day. Um, and then we ended up needing a bunch of extra preferments. So again, to make, to make our life simple, the patterns for GNOME, Enlightenment, XFCE include a lot of stuff like LibreOffice and stuff we didn't have time for, so we ended up writing new ones with, with a more stripped back package set, which meant we needed to add a bunch of prefers and things like that to the config. So if you try to do that one day, that's something you'll run into. Um, images also require a couple of packages, um, particularly for the live CD, and then the way I started was I took a Tumbleweed Kiwi file and I copied it and modified it as needed. Um, I should add another slide here later for next time because there is a fun generation script that takes a template and generates a separate one for each of the desktops that I spent a fair bit of time messing with. But again, the important things here are we didn't want read-only snapshots, and then, again, another thing we did was we disabled it enforcing mode in SE Linux because until that's a problem that's solved in Tumbleweed, it doesn't seem like a problem to solve in this hack week, at least anyway. And then again, as you see, our repositories, we use the two we talked about before rather than the Tumbleweed ones. And you do that, you build your image, and it works. Um, so there's a few other changes you have to do then. Um, the ALP release package, we kind of just guessed some values that kind of seemed appropriate with the idea that this wouldn't be the final version and just had to work for Hack Week. Um, so that's a file you get to change. That's what tells the system that you're ALP and not Tumbleweed. Um, again, there's a few other changes you make in that spec file. I won't go through them all now, but once you've found that one, you'll find the rest if you ever want to do this yourself. Um, as I said before, we made some modifications to the patterns. Um, we ended up dropping some patterns, which meant 
we needed some extra wires. We decided to use wire, wire plumber over pulse audio because it seems like the modern future and we wanted to test that as well. Um, and yeah, and so then this last slide is kind of intentionally blank because in the process of this week it's changed again. And so there's, but basically in the future, yes, I can see us doing something like this. I was hoping by the time we got to this point, we would have more answered questions, particularly around the fact that we presume that Susa will continue to do things like kiosk offerings, and that will probably use GNOME in some form, which will mean we can use their pack Susa's packages and not have to do our own, which is a lot of extra maintenance work we could save. Um, so really, at the moment, the future is, as Lubos said in his talk, leap 15.6 and another six to 12 months to start looking at this idea further. But I think that presuming nothing too drastic changes, there is still the demand, the interest from the community and the want for something like this. And I think what we found between three of us in a week long hack week is we could make this part work. And so that indicates to me that it's probably maintainable if we use as much of the SUSE code as possible. And so, depending on what happens in the next year, maybe we'll be here standing talking about doing something like this for the following year. Or maybe not. And so, with that, questions, comments? Anything? This was aimed to be much more of a, this is what we did, this is how we did it, rather than a, this is what is going to happen in the future talk. I'll let the release team deal with that more. So, But if you have questions on how you do this or why, let me know. Talk to me in the break. Uh, about yesterday's, uh, I think it was yesterday's logo stop and yours, I presume that this would turn into what leap or the next? Um, the future of leap. So like you have like the question mark for the future of leap. Yep. So this is just a proof of concept. Yes, we can still do leap with Alp. Yeah, basically. And I think for me at least, lots of people around the place have different opinions. Whether or not we should call this leap or not, if we get to the point where there is lots of community contributions and we have a reasonable feature set, the leap name is well established as the stable open Caesar, There's a lot of good branding there. I think it would be a shame to lose that. At the same time, if we ended up with something that was just XFCE and Enlightenment and didn't have GNOME and KDE, then clearly that's not the leap people come to expect and we should use a new product name. And so that's kind of my thoughts on the matter, but there, there is a person walking up to a microphone who probably disagrees with me. <laughs> I just want to provide a different view on that because it. it's nothing wrong with anything you said, but also we have the fact that you know a, the key part of the leap story is it's based on sleep. So if Open Sousa goes ahead and does a new leap before Sousa figures out what we're doing with sleep, like is there going to be a sleep sixteen? Whatever, like. You know, it, it sets really weird expectations out there, not just for the community, but also like our customers who are like, you know, is OpenSUSE, you know, doing the the SLE 16 before SUSE does the SLE 16? And that, that's, that's toes I don't think we should be stepping on. So I guess my gracious um, answer to that is that with 15.6, there is disadvantages for the community in 15.6. It's an old code base. A lot of them want something newer. So by taking the sacrifice of 15.6, we're giving SUSE a chance, another year to figure out what they want to do. And if in a year's time they can't figure out what they want to do, then we as the community have to, do, have to do something for our users. Because as far as the community is concerned, the official communication is leap 15.5 is the last leap you have access to. Um, ALP is the future do what you want without. And it seems like what the community wants without is more leap. 
which is kind of what started this. And so if SUSE changes and does more things in the next year, absolutely, I think we should adopt with them. But I don't think we should, in the year after, say we're not having a stable operating system because SUSE hasn't sorted out whether they're doing another sleep yet. There's nothing wrong with what you're doing, it's just what we're going to call it. Like, that's, that's, the, only, yep. that's the only thing so, to discuss. So I know when we started out, the story of Leap was the Leap SLE integration. I think the branding has moved to Leap is the stable, is the stable open SUSE. Um, if SUSE was to come along and say, here's a nice branding budget to rebrand, to rebrand the, stable, the stable open SUSE to some other name, then fantastic, let's go with that. But I th at the end of the day, I think the people who should decide that, as always, is not us and is the community. And so I'll put my four views to the community. You can put your views to the community and we'll let them decide. Uh, and if, if, if the community owned the trademark, I'd agree with you. But we've got that side of it to deal with as well. Yes, that's a world of fun that we can have another week's discussion about. Very different pathway on this, and I'm totally not involved in any of this. This is just as a spectator sport. Hector Martin of the Asahi Linux project over the, the last week has been on a tirade to do with the X11 versus Wayland. Um, I'm going to call it debate, though I don't really think there's much of a debate there. And the thing is that yep. you know they've been involved in a lot of people working on X, and a lot of those developers have moved to Wayland. And they've you know Hector's basically come out and said there is no future in X. They are not developing X stuff, it's never going to work properly, and it is just not going anywhere. So what would change your mind to make Wayland the preferred so, future in, in what you're creating? So here? from my perspective, Wayland is the preferred future. I know enough about the desktop stack to know it's far superior. At the same time, for about the last 10 years, my view has been that Wayland is about five years away from being production ready and stable for my systems, and we're 10 years later, and I still think in five years' time, it will be completely ready for the stuff I care about. So for whatever we build off out 2.0, we might be ready to drop X11, but right now for me, it is less effort for me to maintain an X11 code base that isn't changing much than port all my workflows to Wayland. But isn't that also now risking that you're going to end up with a desktop environment that literally just doesn't have support for modern hardware. Like, there are going to be, you know, for example, the Asahi Linux drivers just will not work on X at all. Like, you, you may end up ostracizing drivers and you might lose hardware access. Yep, so the stuff, the stuff I care about is working towards having Wayland support, but it's missing fundamental things like multi-monitor support and it's not there as an everyday driver yet, but there is work going on. Um, if, my, if, my laptop, if my laptop no longer worked with X11, then that would be pretty good motivation to push me towards Wayland, but um, Enlightenment. So Enlightenment is a weird one in that for ages when Samsung cared about Tizen, they were investing lots of money to get certain parts of it running with Wayland, but then they stopped caring about Tizen and pulled the budget from that, and so it's in a half done state and people are now working on it in their spare time. Yeah, so my question is, when you created and started this project, how do, you, how do you envision users and yourself to watch movies, and how do you envision how codecs are implemented in your model? Um, to, uh, because on your slides there was this GDM and this long list, and I spotted flat pack, and just yesterday I learned Many people just use flat packs from somewhere and they are happy. So, this to watch videos and what, and what not. So, from my position on the board for a few years, I well understand the legal reasons of why we don't have it out of the box. Um, my preferred method is to still say install VLC from the Pac Man repos. Um, if users also want to, in particularly, I think the answer to the question comes. If we don't have Chromium, if we don't have LibreOffice, and we're getting them from flat packs, then we're going to have to make tooling to make flat packs and RPMs both first-class citizens. 
if we're getting everything from RPMs, then I would personally still get things from RPMs, but Flatpak is there. If you choose to do it differently, then you can. I don't want to exclude people from using Flatpaks, but I would prefer to focus on RPM-based where possible. Okay, so to rephrase the question, do you need a project in Pac-Man to satisfy your um, needs or the needs of users, or are, are you fine as it is now? I imagine that in a year or that in a year or so, if this was to take off, it would need a project in Pac-Man the same way that Leap currently does. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, just a heads up. Um, I'm not sure if you are aware. We had a you know, sort of panel discussion by the whiteboard yesterday, uh, just discussing what's happening in IBS right now. So you are aware that the development has shifted, right? Yes. And it's being worked on. Eventually, it will be synced on. But until that, you are kind of blocked. So just be aware of yeah. that. No. Monitor the situation. Yeah. So yeah. one of the reasons that I did the design the way that Leap was yeah. is because I know enough about common criteria, and I kind of presumed that it would end up in IBS. And so I always designed it to work that way. And obviously, we can't start work now on something new yeah. until that syncing is done. But at the same time, I don't want to do, I probably don't want to really start really heavy work, at least until we know that the app code base isn't still being updated from Tumbleweed. Um, because if we, if we can pull our packages from Tumbleweed at the same time that app does its final pull, then we know everything's kind of synced up and works. Whereas if we're trying to be ahead of that, we're only going to need to resync again in a few months and a few months and keep doing that. I only meant it you yep. know, as an infor information for you, so it can be unblocked as soon as yep. it's just synced cool. I have one more. Okay. One thing that um, we've touched 15.6, and we said that we are doing it. You've, you've touched the, the topic that I was saying yesterday as well, rotting code base, you know, um, yep. you can't accept many contributions. And I kind of see it on my, de my desktop too, have to use a combination of DistroBox uh, with Tumbleweed and, and Flatpaks to kind of get the software, you know, like Prusa Slicer. Can't build it on Leap right now. Um, so I guess like just listen and learn from like if you fork it and then it ages, these technologies kind of keep you stay up to date. So we should really focus on them because it seems to be becoming part of our daily workflows anyway. Just saying. Yeah, cool. Anyone else? All right. Thank you all for your time. Enjoy lunch. <laughs>